the report from the court appointed IT experts, professors Joseph Sevilla and Elijah Omwenga, orders of PhDs on IT and lecturers in Strathmore and Kabianga universities respectively, shows clear reluctance on the part of the IBC to fully comply with this court's order of the 28th August 2017 to provide the information requested. In summary, the following are the items that were not availed to the petitioners and to the third respondent and the court. A, firewalls without disclosure of the software version. IBC refused to provide information on internal firewall configuration contending that doing so would compromise and affect the vulnerability of their system. The court appointed ICT experts disagreed with that contention and said it was difficult to ascertain whether or not there were any hacking activities. B, IEBC was also required to provide certified copies of the certificates of penetration tests conducted on the IBC election technology system prior to, uh, prior to and during the 2017 election pursuant to Regulation 10 of the Elections Technology Regulations. I'll take that again. IEBC was also required to provide certified copies of the Certificate of Penetration Tests conducted on the IEBC election technology system prior to and during the 27 election pursuant to Regulation 10 of the Elections Technology Regulations 2017. These were not provided. Instead, IEBC issued uncertified documents and uh, certificates by professionals which did not conform uh, to the regulation. C. IBC was also required to provide specific GPS location of each KMS kit used during the presidential election for the period between the 5th August 2017 and the 11th August 2017. This was not provided. IBC instead provided the GPS locations for the polling stations which was not ordered to be granted. D, documents for uh, allocated and non-allocated CAMS kits procured was provided. However, the information on whether the kits were deployed or not was incomprehensive. E, the court ordered access to technical partnership agreements for IEBC ele uh, election technology system, including a list of technical partners, uh, kind of access they had, and list of APIs for exchange of data with partners. The documents were issued with the exception of the list of APIs. The court appointed ICT experts said full information on APIs would have enabled determination of what kind of activities may have taken place. The court had also ordered IBC to provide the petitioners with the login trail with the login trail of users and equipment into the IBC uh, servers the login trails of users and equipment into the KEMS database management systems, and the administrative access login into the IEBC public portal between the 5th of August 2017 to date, being the date of the court order, which was the 28th August 2017. These were also not provided. Instead, IBC provided pre-downloaded logs in a hard disk, whose source it refused to disclose. The IT experts agreed with the petitioner's contention 
that the first respondent should have demonstrated that the logs emanated from the IBC servers. By allowing all parties to have a read-only access, alternatively, the first respondent could have accessed the information in the presence of the petitioner's agents. Partial live access was also only purportedly provided on the 29th August 2017 at about 3.50 p.m. without ability to access the logs or even view them. The exercise was therefore a complete violation of the court order and the access was not useful to the parties or to the court. It is clear from the above that IEBC in particular failed to allow access to two critical areas of their servers. Its logs, which would have proved or disproved the petitioner's claim of hacking into the system and altering the presidential election results, and its servers with forms that 4A and that 4B electronically transmitted uh, from polling stations and CTCs, it should never be lost sight of the fact that these are the forms that Section 391C of the Elections Act specifically required to be scanned and electronically transmitted to the CTCs and the NTC. In other words, our order of scrutiny was a golden opportunity for the IEBC to place before the court evidence to debunk the petitioner's said claims. If IEBC had nothing to hide, even before the order was made, it would itself readily have provided access to its ICT logs and servers to disprove the petitioner's claims. But what did IBC do with it? It contemptuously disobeyed the court order in these very critical areas. <laughs> 